Hi everybody, my name is Eric Dietrich and I'm with Hit Subscribe and today I'm actually starting a new series of videos and it's going to be a pretty simple concept. Basically what I want to do is install you know different pieces of software and then see how long it takes to kind of get um, to get going. So just the bare you know minimum. Get the piece of software installed, do something interesting like how long does that take? How is the install experience? Um, so today I'm going to start with a piece of software called NCrunch that is made for, or as a Visual Studio plugin. So uh, for you .NET developers out there in particular, this is going to be relevant. The, um, the one thing I probably ought to get out of the way here is, um, I believe it's the FTC or the SE, I don't remember, something that ends in C that requires disclosing of this. Um, NCrunch is a hit subscribe client, so we have a business relationship with them. This is not a paid advertisement. Um, and crunch isn't commissioning it or anything like that, but we do have a relationship. They're a client of hit subscribes. Um, that being said, the uh, even if I didn't have a business relationship with uh, NCrunch, I was a, a fan and user of the tool for a long time before I ever uh, had a business relationship with NCrunch. Um, actually did a video on Pluralsight.com about how to use NCrunch some years back. And um, in, in any case, um, it's not going to matter a whole ton simply because uh, all I'm going to do is go out and grab the software and install it. And lest you think that I am way too experienced uh, to be giving this a fair shake, I'm not. It's been a long time since I installed NCrunch. The timing here is actually perfect because um, I had a Visual Studio Enterprise license that expired. Now I have to uh, get going with Visual Studio Community. So at the moment, I have... Um, a very clean install of Visual Studio with no plugins installed. And so I have to install NCrunch anyway. It's been a long time since I did this, so I honestly don't exactly remember how to do it. I'm going to be figuring it out and you will see everything I'm doing. Uh, that's how this series is gonna work, whether it's a tool from a hit subscribe client or not. Just gonna go in, um, try to figure out how to get the thing going and then demonstrate joy. That's why I'm calling this uh, series the time to joy. So let's take a look. Um, I have here Visual Studio open and it is open to uh, the project that I've been working on recently. This is something called Eldorado that um, uh, maps or uh, does some internal line of business stuff for hit subscribe. So let me close everything out here. Now what you'll see is, and I actually think I have a failing test, but I'm gonna run all these tests. And um, this is kind of how you would normally run unit tests in Visual Studio. You go through this process, and um, this is taking a little bit longer than normal because I just fired up the application, uh, Visual Studio. Uh, but you know, it loads, builds, and then runs the tests. And yeah, I was right, I've got a failing test at the moment. Um, but this is the way you would normally run unit tests. And you get to see in a second what NCrunch does here. Um, but I want to install NCrunch, which is a tool that really puts your uh, unit testing ability uh, into kind of the next gear, I'll call it. So here is NCrunch. And if I were just to, I won't log in or even use my license. What I'm going to do is just um, run this as if I were trying it out for the first time, because you can do a trial version. So we've got this 6.5 megabyte um, MSI installer here, and I'm just gonna download this and run it. And let's see what happens. Nope, oh, it pops it in another window, so I'll show you the wizard. I've got to accept the license agreement. Uh, now it's gonna do some installation for me. I feel like it might ask me to close Visual Studio, but we will see that here in a second. And let me minimize the browser window since we don't really need that. And I will um, kind of give it a moment here to run and do its thing. Maybe I'll tab around a little here in a sec to see if it's popping a dialogue for me anywhere else. It is not. So I think it's just prepping. Ah, there we go. You can see that here. It, um, do you want to allow this app to make changes to your device? Yes. I usually just kind of <laughs> click that without um, sweating it too much. Uh, maybe I should take time to read messages like that a little more, but um, now it is proceeding with the install. Uh, let me see. Oops. Validating install. 
So I am still kind of preparing for it to want to tell me that it needs to... Oh, this might also get interesting because I do have multiple versions of Visual Studio installed. So it, it installed it. I wonder if it installed it within this version. What I would expect up here is to see an NCrunch installation, but I do not see that. So I wonder if I have to... Uh, I wonder if I picked the right version. So the Microsoft Visual Studio 2015 multi-VS 2017 instance capable. Uh, well, let me first try closing and reopening Visual Studio. So this is admittedly a bit of an edge case that I have, which is, um, so I'm gonna, oops. You can't see it over here, but in the command bar, I'm opening Visual Studio Community Edition. Um, this is my secondary monitor that you're seeing, so it's, uh, it's popping windows in the first monitor, but I typed in Visual Studio 2017 Community to the command bar, and now it's just launching the application, so when that finishes and opens, I will um, move it back over into this uh, middle monitor that I'm recording on, so oh, there it comes. Oh, and sure enough, NCrunch was clever enough to find it, so that's there's two interesting things that I want to note here. Number one, it didn't even make me close Visual Studio, which is kind of cool. A lot of um, installers will do that. And then the second thing that that I really like about this is that even though I have, because I've never uh, had two versions of the same year edition of Visual Studio installed simultaneously, I have Community and I have Enterprise. So I really like that uh, NCrunch was clever enough to figure out which, because I have it installed in the Enterprise. So it must have figured out, oh, you're trying to install it in the community version, um, and then gone ahead and done that for me. Um, so with that in mind, uh, I am hopeful that that was a successful installation. Um, oh, I'm going to have to blur out my license key there. So let's go with the use the 30-day evaluation license, just so this might mess me up later, but, but um, this is what you'd be looking at. You wouldn't have a license key. So let me go use 30-day evaluation. And we'll see what it does here, and we'll see if um, we can't get my unit tests running in a way that um, that I like a whole lot better and what I've gotten used to over the years with NCrunch. So it's thinking here. Um, and I believe, yeah, so it defaults to enabled because I have the option to disable it. Um, let me see what it's doing. What NCrunch really does, it's killer feature, and um, I won't go too far into this because... Uh, the goal here is to get to joy, not to dive into the product. But if I pick a, um, let's pick a controller. That'll, this, this guy has plenty of logic. Uh, NCrunch's main killer feature, in my opinion, is that it paints the GUI with the status of your unit tests, passing and failing unit tests. So um, the reason this is so cool is that it paints the GUI, but it does it in real time. So like when you're running NCrunch, as you're changing the code, you can right there in the code see whether your unit tests are passing or failing. And that's what these dots over here on the side are that you wouldn't be used to seeing if um, you weren't an NCrunch user. Now I'm waiting for them to be something other than white because white means, oh, there we go. So um, we are, let's see, I'll have to, I did some pre-edits in the beginning, so I'm not sure what our timeline here is, but maybe about seven minutes uh, all in to get, no, I would, five minutes to get this up and running. It was pretty simple. I mean, just the installer, and it'll go faster for you if you're on a um, computer that's going faster and has fewer versions of Visual Studio. Uh, but let me real quick show um, what happens. Like, let's say I go in and I comment out a line of code. I don't have to compile or build or run the unit tests for what I'm doing to have a visible impact. Now, these dots over here went um, to kind of a lighter hue. That means that it's thinking and it's kind of running your tests in the background. This is also, since we just fired it up and started NCrunch, taking longer than it normally would. Um, once you're kind of up and humming, this sort of thing will go quicker. But you see what's happening here is that now I've got all these red um, uh, dots beside and it's even telling me like, how, hey, now you have uh, four failing and seven passing tests that are running through this particular bit of code. And if I go over here and I run these um, 
uh, unit test kind of the good old fashioned way, then we should see a similar thing. There was one failing before, I think now we're gonna see something like five of them failing. Uh, yeah, that sounds right. Uh, so that's really cool. N crunch is um, right as you work. Yeah, sure enough, we have five failing tests. Um, N crunch right as you work is uh, uh, changing, you know, the, the color of this thing. So basically, if, if you're practicing test driven development, this is especially helpful. But in general, I mean, it's great for unit tests where you can like visibly see as you're changing the code whether you're breaking things or not. Um, see, it's kicking in a little faster this time. Uh, and as you kind of get up to uh, normal working speed, it, it goes pretty light and quick because NCrunch is actually smart enough to figure out um, which tests are likely to be impacted by your changes and prioritize running those. So um, there you are. There are a ton of features for NCrunch, and maybe we'll do deep dives into some of the uh, products that we work with at a later time. But the only point here was to kind of get to joy. And we are at that point of joy under 10 minutes and you're up and running with this really cool tool. Yeah, uh, it's a pretty, you know, nice, easy user experience to get it installed. So, hey, thanks for tuning in this first time. Um, I look forward to doing more of these because it's kind of fun to install and play around with software products, especially as I get into ones that I don't really know. Um, you know, it's that lovely combination of frustrating and then satisfying and all that as you uh, install something new and get settled with it. So I'm hoping that this series kind of um, helps folks, you know, follow along to get going with something, but also uh, to give you an idea for how hard or easy it is, is it to get up to speed with a given tool. Um, so thank you for tuning in and, uh, you know, give us a subscribe if this seems like it's something that might be interesting in the future, and then you will get notified when we do more of these Time to Joy videos. So thank you for watching.